This is Show versus Business, your weekly take on pop culture from two very different perspectives with your host, the real Theo Harvey, and Mr. Benja coming with all the relevant info about the week in pop culture. So, Mr. Benja, what are we covering today? That was a great intro, man. I, I just got to stop and say that. I don't know. I don't know. You're getting into the fall, the holidays, having great intros. Now you got me excited. I am excited to go into the story that we're going to cover. And the first one, we had an AI watch with Microsoft and ChatGPT. ChatGPT is doing some things. Everybody's heard about it. Everyone knows about it. But now it can see, hear, and speak. Some interesting ramifications on that. And we've even got Tom Hanks as part of this AI watch. So come back for that one. Also, speaking of Microsoft, they're going nuclear. And they're like, going to wage war. But I'm not talking about bombs. I'm talking about technology in the AI war. So Microsoft's actually building some nuclear plants or trying to. And it's all getting very interesting on the energy front and AI there. So you got to watch out for these guys, which is what we have the AI watch and Microsoft. Also. The Sphere is balling in Vegas. In case you haven't heard or seen, there's this huge bowl in the middle of Vegas now. It's just massive. We've got to get the exact dimensions of it, but it's one of those things. Some people are calling it the eighth wonder of the world. I don't know. Theo might not go that far, but it's pretty amazing. Tell you what what it's doing. Stock prices up. Is it dystopian future vibes? It's a thing that we need to talk about. And also, the teens are now back using LinkedIn. I don't know why teams are using LinkedIn. I'm reading the reports here. Maybe when I post my job, they'll also want me to do a six second video of me dancing because I got my job. I don't know. But teams are using LinkedIn now. And finally, we're going to have a little vent. Theo brought up this thing of having a vent. So we're going to vent a little bit on the show at the very end and just let you know our feelings, get them out in the open, air them out. And we got to ask, is the MCU still excited? I don't know. Is it still exciting? Are we still excited about it? Loki just came out. We're not going to spoil anything, but now it's worth talking about the MCU again. So that's the five I got for this week. How you doing, Theo? I am doing wonderful, Mr. Benja. Man, when you were talking, I just thought about people are talking about different things. (laughs) This year in Las Vegas, people. Anyway, so just my my terrible Trump um, impersonation. Excuse me for that. I had to say that. But anyway, Mr. Benja, it's October. I don't feel anything, man. I don't. We were sitting here talking about different things that we could discuss and talk about pre-show. And Mr. Benja, I'm just feeling it now, man. I don't know what it is. There's nothing new. It will talk about a lot of these different things, but I don't feel excitement about any new technologies right now. I don't feel excitement about new shows, movies. It's just a lot. And I don't know why that is. You're trapped. You're trapped. They got you trapped in the, in the cycle. They're, you know, they're they're plugging you with the the feed every day. Get the feed. And now they need that feed. You don't have to see it. like, I need that feed. (laughs) I I, I don't know what it is, Mr. Benja, because I'm, We'll talk about it, but it's just, man, I'm just not excited by anything. I mean, it's Halloween, maybe we'll do a Halloween episode show, but yeah, we, we know what's going to happen. A lot of horror films, a lot of stuff to talk about. November, football, sports, December, Christmas time, end of year. It's just like this cycle, man. So I don't know, man. I'm, I'm looking for something that's going to be exciting. Maybe the sphere could be it. I don't know, Mr. Bitch. I don't know. But I think I'm not the only one that's feeling this right now. Just last year, last know. couple it's been a lot of interesting technologies and, and stock market stuff and the economy. But right now, we're just in this weird time right now, I think. And I think people still think we're still in the old time, but that time is gone, man. With high inflation, I just talked to a few folks recently and just people are starting to feel it now. The, the, the economy is starting to slow down a little bit. We're not going back to that wild west of new toys, new technologies, new tools. We're going back to when we, you and I grew up, even though we didn't know it, right, at the time, because we were younger, but it's just this time of high inflation and just people just being static. Hey, go do my job, make my money, have a little margin so I can go take my vacation once or twice a year. And that's it, Mr. Bencher. I ain't trying to build something. 
build, make a million dollar portfolio in stock market or try to do a startup on the side. I do feel like we're getting to a different phase, but I don't think a lot of people realize that. And so that's why I'm chilling this blah, this in, in the atmosphere right now. We went through this hype cycle and they're, try, they're trying so hard, Mr. Benja. It's just like with entertainment and stuff. They're trying, oh, this is going to be the next thing. But yeah, we'll talk about this later. But even with AI, we all know that the, the big players are probably going to win AI. They just have more resources. So anybody has an idea in this space is this DOA. So beyond that, I don't see any new excitement around technologies, thoughts, ideas right now. And that's interesting, man. And we've been, I don't know. Are you feeling the same way? Just talk to me. About I, don't, I don't think you're alone. I think there's, I, I think this is a general psychological disorder on a mass scale. AI comes out as Trump does whatever. And people are like, eh. And I, I think we're, th that adrenaline rush, that hype cycle that, hey, this is here. I think it's just wearing on us. And now we're just, oh yeah, I'm using AI, whatever. I know it's amazing. Yeah, whatever, dude. It's, hey, you can go to the sphere and post it on Instagram. Yeah, whatever, dude. I, I, I don't know if everybody's getting into this, this blah period. And I, but I feel like we are. So I'll have to do some research. We can actually look this up. I know I have a, I know some people that have, get, have problems with overstimulation and they stepped away from, AI, I mean, not AI, they stepped away from the internet a long time ago. And now I'm wondering if that same type of reaction is happening on a more broad scale to the more average person. Yeah, man. It's just like we're over dopamine, you know, with, you know, you go on your phones and you just get dopamine hit from TikTok and all these shorts on YouTube. And it's just like, it's a lot, man. As someone who's actively putting content out every day and doing stuff like that too. Yeah, I really, I'm not participant in that because I'm exhausted with it. Right. So it's, I'm just trying to figure out every now and then. Yeah, there's some good folks that do some good value, bring some good ideas and thoughts. But I'm just curious, Mr. Benjes, where's the next assignment coming from? And I think it, it just, I think it's really about people have to just dig deeper into themselves and figuring out what's going to drive them to be happy, which is a good thing. I'll be honest with you. I think that's a great thing. The external stimulus we've been getting for the last probably decade, I think that's over. And I think people have to realize that stimulation outside is going to be over. So internal stimulation is where it's about. And that's really about self-improvement, focus on your family and friends, focus on your goals and strategies. If you're getting trying to look for, go ahead. Getting some spirituality in there. and probably, Yeah, man. I think that's all coming back, man, because it's, we've been, been searching for so long for all these different things. Oh, this is NFT is going to change the world. Oh, uh, the blockchain. Oh, uh, this new technology is going to change everything. And then you got all these gurus on YouTube telling you this and that and how they made this and that. And you start realizing, man, th there's nothing new under the sun. And then streaming was going to change our entertainment world. And now all of them are pulling back. And that they're starting to raise their prices, number one. They're starting to take away shows. And so it's hard to find shows sometimes even more because they realize, wait a minute, we can't just give it away for free. It's so <laughs> yeah, we got to rise the prices up, dog. So anyway, it's just, yeah, just this, this vision. I mean, even Uber is not the same anymore. It's like Uber is just like us. It's a, it's a taxi, right? It's not what it used to be because I think we have been entering in this new phase where the realities of economics, of opportunities exist and there's structures for a reason. So. It's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next five to 10 years. And, and I think that's why some of the stories we're talking about today is going to be more around the reality setting in where you're seeing things that are like, wow, this is, seems mundane, but it makes sense. Yeah, you, you make a very good point. It's like October blues, as you noted earlier. But funny is I try to stay on the cutting edge of spirituality because one day I just want to transcend and float my astral body through the ceiling and be done with all y'all. Please don't visit me in your <laughs> astral plane. I will not be happy, Mr. Benji. Wake me up in the astral plane. No. Don't, don't, uh, <laughs> don't, don't call the exorcist people on me. But no, I try to stay on the, the leading edge of that. And what I'm seeing now is everybody going social and all this. And I, I didn't start thinking about this until I, I, as I said last week, I've been working on my sleep habits. So now I don't sleep with an alarm. I've been trying to get really calm sleep. I wake up, 
my mind clear. I try to go to sleep with my mind clear. It's a whole, it's a whole practice, right? No alarm life. Beautiful if you can, if you can rock it. I got excited when I was at the grocery store over a bag of sweet potatoes. And I was like, uh, they don't look that interesting, but they're a different variety than I usually get. Uh, whatever. I'm trying to experience things, experience something new. Let me grab this bag of sweet potatoes. It's a variety I've never gotten before. Whatever. My dad would have been proud of me. Took it home, had the sweet potatoes, and I'm in my kitchen just by myself. This is amazing. Screw whatever happened in One Piece. Screw whatever happened on Netflix. Yeah, I don't care about the new live action cyberpunk, whatever. This here sweet potato has a nice crunch and flavor. And it actually goes well inside this little stew I'm creating. This is interesting. Wow, I'm, this is a sweet potato. And I'm just sit, I'm sitting in the kitchen, just like breathing in slowly. Sweet potato. Ah. And I want that zen, right? So I'm there. And I really think that it's connecting with a lot of people socially. Because the first thing I wanted to do was like go to my, go to some people I, I text with and whatever and be like, hey, guys. Potatoes are great. And everybody would just, yeah, man, thanks for sharing. It's all, some old hippie commune and stuff that I used to run into down in San Diego. So I think that vibe might be going online in bigger forces coming up soon, but we'll see. I love it. Man. I think that'd be useful, man. I would tell you the flip side, Mr. Bitch, I had the opportunity to watch. You remember that Church Hill song? Yeah, it was that big church, man. They had Hill song, worship songs. That was the first thing that kind of bubbled up here in the U.S. And then they made a big play in the U.S. like back in 2013, 2012 mm -hmm. with Carl Luntz. He was like the hype priest. He was the one that was the, the preacher for uh, Justin Bieber. And he did stuff for it with the New York Knicks. He was Carl Luntz. He was this, this big preacher, right? And, 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 and it was just interesting. It was like, okay, wow, this is a positive story. He's trying to change the culture in New York for a positive message. Definitely, I'm a Christian, so I believe in that. And so it's one of those things where I was like, wow, that was positive. But man, he just, you find out when they dig into the story, it was all corrupt, man. It was so sad. And it was like, he brought all these mill millennials and Gen Zers out to church, like thousands, right? And then come to find out he was doing all kind of mess with Chino's wife and stuff. But it wasn't just him. It was the bishop that established it. He was doing some shenanigans. And the, the, the bishop's dad was doing some crazy stuff with kids and stuff like that. So the whole thing just crumbled in less than like 10 years. And I just say that to say, I think um, I admire people trying to do things that's positive and trying to, you know, impact people's lives. But that realness you talked about, right? Bringing it that connection to people that's real. Um, you have to stay true to that, man. If you don't, man, then you can end up leading people down different paths. And that's a shame, man. It's just like you don't, I think people got to, they're looking for realness, transparency, and someone who's consistent to the messaging. And I think that's what people are hungry for. And so when I saw that documentary, it's on Hulu called The Hill Song, or for, I forgot what it's called, but it was basically about that whole storyline and uh, how it went to the height and to the depths uh, here in the United States in less than 10 years. So obviously they've been around forever in Australia, but it was just shocking how Something like that could just blow up so quick and be so positive influence for so many people. Great experience. And it'd be crap in less than 10 years. And so I think that's what people are looking for. And that, that emulates a lot of stuff we talk about, like NFTs, the blockchain, the stock market. And it's just, I think that was a symptom of the whole rotten core. SBF, Bakeman Free, yeah. going to jail. It's just, wow, this is, this is what we, the, the core is rotten. And I think that's what people are looking for. What is true and genuine integrity is, hey, you see it's still rot, it's still through and through, right? You don't have a still rot on the outside, inside, there's nothing but bitter wood. So cut through that first layer, it's going to crumble inside. So anyway, I, I say that to say not to be pessimistic or just very negative right now, but I just saying that to say, hey, I think that's what I'm feeling. And I wonder if other folks are feeling that same thing. Yeah, I think it all relates, man. Later on in the stories, we got LinkedIn, how teens are getting on there and not for business reasons, but it's because it's a more sociable place as opposed to a more marketed, you're getting sold to product type of place. And 
we were going to make this a story, but yeah, AMP shut down on me. And <laughs> AMP was actually a social place. People got together, played music. You're listening to somebody. You're in the chat talking. There, was, there weren't a lot of political agendas like you see on the Twitter spaces. There weren't a lot of random BS like you would find on Clubhouse. It was actually like, hey, guys, I like this music. Oh, man, I remember I hearing the song, da, da, da. It was actually building a community. Well, and, and so, oh, can't have that community thing shut down. When I was about to do my, right when I was about to bring my comeback. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about that. Amazon, man, I just can't trust Amazon. Yeah, you know, in the midst <laughs> of uh, the latest way Amazon is, they got a uh, monopoly claim against them, right, by the government, which we know they do price changing and things like that based on what they see from you know, other manufacturers. And stuff. Yeah, man. They created Ant, which is great, but yeah, I just don't believe they have full f faith and trust in stuff they build in the social media world. But I commend you for trying and trying to do something different. But yeah, man. I was there because it was fun, man. I was having a, I was having a decent time. People in the comments chatting while I'm playing songs and stuff. Well, hey, I, I think that's why I trusted it because I think you're more of a product person and than I am, and just hey show versus business right so you're more like hey this is a cool product i see the vision here what could be and it's just like man so business came over yeah the business beat that ass man because <laughs> it was like nah dog yeah it's a cool product but if it ain't making us dollars we shut this thing down and that's what amazon did with f-o-h yep absolutely <laughs> yeah we got to keep an eye on these guys and i think we need to keep an eye on them, especially in the terms of AI. And that brings us to story number one, our neighborhood AI watch. I, think, I like doing the AI watch. Thanks for bringing these up. Today, we got the, a, a new, not new, but it's new to the mass market. Chat GPT can now see, hear, and speak. Before, it was just talking and reading your words. Now we got three other senses or ways to incorporate all of the stuff we're sending it as spooky and i don't know idea of all the stuff that chat gpt was doing and now this idea that it can now see hear, and speak that means you can plug it up to your camera that means you can plug it up to your microphone that means you can plug it up to your headphones it can talk to you it and tell you what it is thinking in ways that we hadn't considered before so theo how are you feeling about this new evolution, this new growth spurt, that's what we'll call it, of chat GPT, because this beast is growing, right? It is, Mr. Pitch. It is. It's just, we see, obviously, chat GPT, open AI, and then I saw Amazon is putting some money into Anthropolic. I think that's the name of the rival AI company as well that's trying to do some stuff. So yeah, G chat GPT is in the lead. I think this is a direct outgrowth, too, of looking for new data to help train the model so we can you know, see, hear, collect that data set and continue to learn, that would be huge for it. So they can leverage more and more users to, to help it with that. Because I think my philosophy or my bit, my, my prediction is that with the writer's strike restricting AI from getting credit for any rewrites and things like that, and other industries looking to restrict AI from like Getty images, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I predict that more and more industries are going to be like, no AI, you can't have my stuff. My data is in my data and you know, my own large language model, right? <laughs> I hire some AI guy to help me do it. So I think open eye, this is the only thing they have to do, right? Just, they have to get more data sets and, and having it, being able to, to see things, to look at images, be able to hear things, to put that into a large language model. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so key for it to continue to grow. That's from a business standpoint, right? And so now the challenge is who do people trust with it? in the AI world. I don't know if people trust any of these systems right now. We're using them, but if you're really building a business right now, are you going to trust either open AI or Anthropolic or any other, or Facebook even with your data to help train it? I don't know. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. And for context, I'm just thinking about all of the different applications for an AI system like this, being able to see, hear and speak. So let's say you just turn your webcam on and just have it sitting there. And it's funny there, if you're not putting tape over your webcam, you need to, because they're actually search engines 
I, I'm dead serious. There are search engines that will go through webcams. You know, they'll find routers that are that have ways into your webcam, and their search engines just hey, is there anybody in in Florida, in Tallahassee, Florida, who has their webcam on? It, it could ask something like that. This hacker based search engine, right? I'm not even going to. Mm. I'll let you find it if you want to really go down that path for research purposes only. But yeah, there are search engines where you can do that. And now that you've got AI, you're like, hey, AI, I can parse through this. Let me see if I can find a celebrity. Let me see if I can find some government official. Let me see if I can mm -hmm. find somebody mm -hmm. I can potentially raw from just by running AI on this and combine that with this webcam hacking. A lot of hacking is based on whether or not we think this information is useful or not. A lot of times hackers just don't care. They have access, but don't care. It's, yeah, you know, whatever. It's, it's this random guy. And so, yeah. do you know that's such and such's brother? Or do you know that that guy has well, access to? The thing is, you make a good point. They'll keep it. They don't know if it's used for or not, but they'll have it somewhere. And what they find <laughs> out, what the access is for. Oh, yeah. That was the prime minister's second cousin. I'm there, exactly. dog. Let's do it. So, that, that could lead to a whole different thing. I'll let your thoughts run wild on that <laughs> webcam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Webcams or have an AI bot that's listening in on your microphones. In fact, Mr. Ben, I'm not in conspiracy mode right now, but but I heard that uh -oh. this is already happening. If your phone is nearby, they I'm literally experiencing it with my wife. We talked about something, and next thing you know, she pops up Facebook. There's an ad for whatever we talked about. So there have been, you know, summations. <laughs> machinations, <laughs> my favorite <laughs> word, around how yes, how this is already potentially possible. So I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. I, but bad, there's always a good. You can have a camera inside of your refrigerator or you can just take a picture of like all this food you have and say, hey, what can I cook for five people? Chat GPT, boom. I understand images, but so I can see. I got you. And it'll just go in there and whiff up a recipe, get take a picture or go over a video of a group full of people. And if you're trying to search for somebody, a missing person, let's say you're trying to search for somebody that may be about to have a heat stroke at a carnival or a festival or something, you could have cameras actually point out like, hey, that dude has all the symptoms of a heat stroke and people can run out and help him out. You can have some people dispatched. So there's a lot of good that this could do. And it's going to need its own type of governance and what do you call them? The beneficial actors that, that push this thing in the right direction and keep it out of the wrong hands, basically. If we want to talk about that, look, there's somebody who's upset now by AI, Mr. Benja. America's dad, Tom Hanks. <laughs> he warns fans to beware of a dental plan ad featuring an AI version of him. He said, in so many words, I have nothing to do with it. He says, beware. There's a video out there promoting some dental plan with an AI version of me. I have nothing to do with it. He was telling his 9.5 million followers on Instagram. Mr. Benja, so I, yeah, this is along those lines, Mr. Benja. I think what we're seeing is, yes, these tools can do amazing things and wonderful things, but the trust factor, man, is starting to go down, especially for the creators who realize the, what these tools are doing, especially we talked about the writers skill, the mm -hmm. SGA, SAG, and NAFTA. They're negotiating this week. We'll see what the what terms they come with. I guarantee this this Tom Hanks thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a, a someone who created it just to finagle with the negotiations on the SAG after thing, right? Yeah. This is along the lines of what they don't want to see, right? They don't want to see fake images of themselves in ads being used in perpetuity and the actor themselves did not get credited for that or compensated for it. So yes, these tools can do more and more powerful things, which is, and at one time that was exciting. Remember those, those exciting times. I, Mr. Benjamin, we've been friends so long. I remember being in your dorm room with Netscape announced and we were so hyped. It's said, oh, it's a browser. Yeah. Wow. What is that? I don't know what that is, but we're going to be on a browser to go see stuff on the yes. internet. You remember that day? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> And we were like so hype about technology. I think those days are over, Mr. Benjamin. People know how nasty technology can get and they're going to be like, I don't know if I want AI to do all this stuff anymore. And 
So I think that's going to be the, the next, the first, what, 25 years of this explosion technology. The next 25 years is just going to be the opposite of that. <laughs> I, can you stop it? Is you can't. You I agree. You can never you stop to, technology, but you can slow it down or put you it in the low box. You can slow down the consumer implementation of it. I, you will not slow down the business case uses of it. And so when someone goes to the box office and you see the person typing at the computer, they may just be, they're, they're not doing anything. They don't need those people there. So it's, you're going to start getting a lot of this back end and under the surface level stuff that changes because people don't want to see the surface level change and they'll just change the underlying mechanisms. They still have this at a lot of a lot of restaurants. It's yeah, I could use online ordering, but we have waiters and waitresses there simply for the fact that people want to order from people. Mm. It's not that we actually need those people. I want to get to a point where there's one waiter walking around the entire place, just like, hey, how y'all doing? I, I, maybe we don't even call him a waiter. We call them a the restaurant steward, where he just walks around talking to people, shaking hands. Hey, man, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Da da da. Oh yeah, just speak your. Just tell me your, what you want to order, and they tell you. And he's not even listening. He's got a microphone. It's hooked into the AI chat GPT. It automatically sends the order to the back room. The robots in the back cook it up. And, and the fake chef comes out and says, hey, guys, your order's going to be ready soon. I'm just working on some things. Wow, he's handling all the orders by himself. Yeah, man, I got my AI robots in the back doing all of it. We're just here. We're just a face, man. We're just actors. I don't cook. He doesn't actually know how to bring food out. He doesn't know the difference between a souffle and a flambe. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't either, but yeah. we're all, we're all going to have, it's all going to be a face. Everybody's going to be a face. And that's, that's well, not you a know bad what? thing. Oh, it's not a bad thing. Mr. Benjamin, there was a CEO and he's not wrong. Cause I've thought about this as someone who mm. owns his own business. He pretty much says he hires about a thousand people, do all these different things in his company. He said within five years, he's probably, he could probably run his whole company with just AI alone. He's not wrong. There's a lot of stuff that with some of the, Folks that I hire, the way we're using technology, they're using it more and more. And you start realizing, what am I paying for? If you're not coming, if you're just doing the bare minimum, putting some stuff in AI to come up with these answers, if you're not expanding upon that, it's like, I don't need you. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. and I think we're going to start seeing that. So to, to your point, yes, you know, this is show versus business. Business will always take precedence. I think the challenge is, if they want to get more access to data, they're going to need consumers, actors, creators, unless they find a way to incentivize them wait, you know, wait, to what use do you mean their data. To data. I mean, what do you the, the AI systems to train them, to build up their systems to learn more and more faster and faster. Now, to okay. your point, they've gotten data up to this point from the internet. Any new stuff that's starting to come out, I think people are going to be very restrictive of that knowledge, right? That data that they you know, sure. created. So the AI won't learn. They'll still have some base knowledge. I would just say, hey, these AI systems are probably trained up until 2022, 2023. But then maybe going forward, like all these industries are going to start shutting down access to their data in some kind of form or fashion. But, but they're just going to use their own data. Who's that? I mean, AI the, systems? Yeah. Did, you, yeah. did you see that link I sent you from Frank Kern? Uh, what did he say? So he's got this, he's got this new AI system. And it basically makes a chatbot based off of the AI of his own knowledge. Okay, base. yes. And that's now, what so I'm saying. They're going to create their own large language models for just their data sets, to your point. So it's going mm -hmm. to be limited. Well, I'm talking about the big, like big oil, right? Big AI, like OpenAI or mm -hmm. Thermotic or, or Facebook. They're not going to have access to that data. And their systems are going to be limited to certain subsets. And really the most valuable data is going to be very nuanced and specific, just like in sales, right? If you, if I sell to you, the higher profitability is if I sell mm -hmm. to you something very specific to you. So if I say, Mr. Benja, I will sell you your artist, the best pen ever. If you do this pen, you can sell million dollar art pieces of art, right? And so to you, you will pay almost anything, $10,000 for that pen. because it's a specific product to you. So the ones who have the specific data sets to their industries and to their audiences, to their avatars that they're selling to, yes, the AI will be valuable for them. I'm just talking about big AI. They're not going to be the ones who have access to the data, if that makes sense. I don't think they need it. Okay. 
because I think everyone's just going to license out to each other or you can make mm -hmm. predictive models where it's like, oh, I can. In fact, you're going to have bad actors too, like somebody from some other country who doesn't care about your, your morals or anything. It's, hey, I'm going to pay $10,000 or whatever to get all your information and license it in some other country. And then once I've licensed it, I'm like, thank you. Make a copy of all that data and say, Sit, sell it back to somebody in the U.S. and be like, hey, look, I've got data that's similar to what this guy has. That's, oh man, that's, that's such an easy workaround. I've, I've seen entire websites and online stores get copied, cloned, remixed, repeated, done okay. literally dozens of times more than the original creator. So licensing, good luck with it. But yeah, this is an AI war, right? Yes, it is. So we got to talk about one of the big players. We're going to do that with story number two. Microsoft waging war with AI, waging nuclear war with AI. How do I that? I know it sounds crazy, but Microsoft is building nuclear power reactors where they really want to. They're in the process of building out nuclear reactors so they can have clean energy to power all the AI processing that they're going to do. That's a lot of processing, a lot of power that you got to have your own mini nuclear reactor used to power a small city. Screw that. It's going to power my 1700 computers in the back because we're all pumping out AI. That sounds a little crazy, right? A little dystopian, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, man, what is going on? We haven't really talked about the, the, the energy that's needed to fuel these large language models, right? It's orders of magnitude, right? The chips themselves are getting more advanced than what's it called? NVIDIA chip yeah. manufacturers. It's, it's getting going through the roof, right? Their stock price and because they create a lot of these uh, customized chips to make AI possible. But these big, call it big AI. So basically the big tech companies who've already invested in AI thought leadership, right? Now they're trying to create these models around it and it needs so much Energy, just like we talked about this blockchain before, just so much energy is required, all this stuff. And so they're looking at new ways to fuel it. And nuclear is interesting, man. We talked about nuclear being the future of energy for us. It's going to be the future of our information energy because they're trying to pull that out. So that's interesting, man. They didn't even throw that out there. Like I said, do I have an opinion about this? They're going to figure out a way to fuel this, right? To make this worthwhile for them. And so if it takes nuclear energy, if it takes solar, if it takes what thermal, if it takes whatever, <laughs> they're going to figure this out. But the challenge is going to be, can they do it safely? Right. And so that's going to be the next big thing for the future of AI. But Microsoft you know, has more money than God. They can make it happen. Yes, they are the, the primary factor of man to man. The, that's my acronym for Microsoft Alphabet and NVIDIA. Yeah, I forgot the rest. I'll get back to you on that. But man to man, <laughs> look at it. It'll be in the show notes. But anyway, yeah, it's like nuclear power is something that's been off in the wings and there's been a surprisingly small amount of research to really push that technology because no one's really wanted to. Big oil was already there. People thought it wasn't clean. So let's not, you know, develop it because what are we going to do? We cause another nuclear accident, movies like Chernobyl coming out. So they don't want to give nuclear funding, but. It's clean as clean, supposing the thing doesn't blow up. It's a clean energy and it's effective. So now people are talking about putting reactors in space and we already have nuclear subs. So just take a sub, put it in space. Now you've got nuclear rockets that can fly everywhere. And Elon's probably already in that camp. Sitting oh, don't get me started by Elon, Mr. At Benjamin. Elon is so in the oh, pot. Man. All these governments in the pocket of Elon because he does satellite deliveries and so there's a story about i think it was in the new york times recently where his satellite was instrumental in helping ukraine in their war against russia because yep. he has a, a way to turn on off information gps locations for certain connections in the country of russia so if he doesn't turn it on then ukraine can't see what they need to see it's man you tough man 
I, I'm stumbling here, but because it's just like Elon has more power than we realize it. So going back to your original thought, it's just like nuclear is one aspect of that. But just having access to these type of tools, man, um, uh, in some of these billionaires' hands is just almost frightening. In, in government's hands, too. Yeah. And uh, speaking of what's interesting about when you talk about hands being in it, it's Bill Gates was the person really pushing AI back in the day. And he's no longer with Microsoft, but... It's still his imprint there. You can see a lot of the thing, the momentum he set forth. And that was a whole Bill Gates thing. We need to be really big on AI. So people are like, why is Microsoft jumping into AI like this? Yeah, it's part of the Microsoft blueprint. They put in $10 billion with uh, OpenAI, Microsoft, and their investment with it. So now we're seeing them getting into energy, which might have sounded crazy a couple of years ago, but it's like, what if Microsoft becomes the premier energy player in the world? It's just stuff you're not thinking about. So we've got all these electric cars. Suddenly you have nuclear cars. Suddenly, yeah, there's a lot of interesting ways this can happen. But here's one interesting point of view that I didn't think of until I was putting all these show notes together and had the chance to look at it. What if, like, part of what we were doing with the whole nuclear control, like controlling the nuclear access and the technology and the minerals and the materials and the knowledge of creating a nuclear weapon source. What if that was like a boogeyman kind of thing? Because we wanted all of the energy and the, this whole nuclear thing to ourselves or just to a small group of players. Hey, we don't want this random country just showing up with nuclear energy. Hey, we're going to be nice. We're not going to make bombs. We're just going to make power. It's not, we're going to control that and put the facade of a bomb on it. People are really thinking about this stuff because if I'm thinking about it and I have no stake in it, somebody with stakes <laughs> somewhere thinking about yeah. it. Game theory, what I want. No, I wouldn't put it past us. What counterintelligence, right? Make people um, misdirection, people think. You care about one thing, but you really care about something else. U.S. is good at that all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was a long-term play to figure this out. In the meantime, controlling energy, which is going to be the, 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 the vision for the next 50 years, right? Because we see every new technology that's coming out. Because you remember when we were all in blockchains, right? NFT, yeah. remember we were talking about energy then, right? We're just yeah, like, exactly. oh, how we going to do all this? And oh, it's going to take so much energy. We got to come up with ways to thermal energy to fuel the blockchain and now oh it's ai we have to think of ways and so energy is going to be and what's happening the population is exploding man we see that it's going to become more and more expensive to take care of these populations climate change is happening it's real after this summer if you didn't live in florida or phoenix and didn't experience 110 degree weather it's real, Mr. Benjamin. <laughs> you realize it was painful to go outside. Literally, you were burning up every time you walked outside this summer. And that's going to get worse. Power is going up, increases in electricity. So I definitely think, Mr. Benjamin, that, you know, what you're saying is not false. Look, we're not trying to be conspiracy guys. Look, we're just looking at the tea leaves and prepare yourself. You know, this is show versus business. We've been talking a lot of business. Be prepared because you will see costs. And energy costs are going up. In my family, and I see that now. So I know for a fact that they're looking at nuclear as potentially a way to counteract that. What does that look like? It's anybody's guess. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. October's coming, and we figured we'd start with something a little scary, a little spooky. <laughs> I have fun with this. I don't like back in the day when I used to make it a regular habit to get a little we eat in the system. It was fun to think about these things. And it still is to a certain degree. I won't say to how much of a degree, but yes. <laughs> they coming for you in the energy centers. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey man, speaking of energy and taking up a lot of uh, power, we got story number three. The Las Vegas sphere is baller. This thing, <laughs> if you haven't heard about it, Basically, it's this huge dome. I got to get the dimensions on it, but it's this huge dome that they have sat in the middle of Las Vegas, and it looks like a bowl coming out of the ground, and that's why they call it the sphere, amazingly enough. But the thing is, it's got screen. It's, got, it's basically one big movie screen 
all around it. And you can project any type of image around this thing. I say project, but it's a series of LED lights and you can look up the technology for yourself. But this thing is pretty fascinating. And it's one of those things where if you're flying in or you're seeing pictures from far away, it's just this massive structure that's a, a display all in its own. It's the biggest advertisement, information, disseminating thing, I think, on the planet. Yeah, I, you, you've seen the images of this thing, right, Theo? I remember when they were building it, yes. I, when okay. I went out there a couple of times in 2019, 2020, 2021, they were building it, man. Yes, this thing is massive, man. And it, the, the, the unique thing about it is not just what they project on the outside, right, with different images and ways they can set it up, but what they do inside. The inside obviously can look like a planetarium. Have you ever been there? Just showing you how things work in, in, in space and things of that nature. But they can make it seem like you're in a box. I heard that's what someone told me. So it's just the way they set it up. It's supposed to be this massive experience, man. And it costs me, thinking about the numbers, $2.3 billion to make. That's a lot of money, man. Bill not a million, billions. And this is something that's supposed to be ground, which which what Vegas is supposed to do, right? They're supposed to do something interesting and unique and different. And so they announced the September show. September 29th was the first show for the Irish Right Band U2 began a 25 show residency called U2 Live at S Sphere or at the Sphere. And so U2 is supposed to, it's supposed to be this amazing show that you can watch over the next 25 shows at the Sphere. It's supposed to be like the best thing since, I don't know, ever. <laughs> so, so anyway, <laughs> I say all this to say that, yeah, they put a lot of money into this and that's just what Vegas does, man. It's, we talk about, is anything exciting out there? This is exciting. Man. It's Vegas though. This is what they do. They spend millions, billions of dollars to get you interested in trying to come back there. Yeah. especially during times of bad times like this with inflation. So having a sphere was pretty very forward looking on their part to ground, do this in 2019 after we went through a pandemic and now inflation, I think this will help Vegas. So good kudos to them. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very cool thing. And if you're thinking about like the gener the development or the evolution of one type of viewing experience to another, we had IMAX and it's big and it's square. And then you have the curved monitors and the curved televisions that are slightly bent. Okay, that's cool. Now imagine a big ass sphere that basically, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really go all around you, but it it basically makes this big dome of a sphere and it feels like you're sitting in, in bleachers while you're at your seats. So everybody's sitting in these bleacher type seats and it just the Im images are displayed all around this, the inside of this big dome sphere. So you can look up and watch elephants roll by and see all types of craziness happening. And it looks like you're in there. It's a pretty phenomenal thing from what I've seen. And I'm wondering how much this could change entertainment because I, I remember you, me and you went to Coachella. Man, I was just about to bring that up. Wow. We, we think yeah. alike, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they had the miniature dome and I was like, Hey, this is cool. And yeah, you do have thoughts of planetarium. You do have thoughts of this other enveloped space. It's maybe we could start reformatting all these theaters to have these big dome like enveloped spaces. And the sphere is maybe the biggest one or the first one. I don't know. No, you hit the nail on the head. I was thinking the same thing about that. I, I had to think for a second. I said, did I go with Mr. Bencher? Who was there with me? <laughs> so my mind was like, <laughs> Doo -doo -doo -doo. Chad Cack, like, yes. We, me and Mr. Benjamin went to go see the sphere. We stood in line where everybody was hyped up. By the way, guys, you go to Coachella, man, the night is scary. Mr. B I don't know about you, but I was literally scared from life. I'm not a, a small guy, right? But it was like, hey, kids were hyped up or who knows what, what illicit substance. Yeah, what pharmaceutical representation, and they all had glow sticks on them. It was complete dark. So now, yeah, and then you walk up on folks, and they're just looking at you like zombies. You're like, oh, this, I did not have a fun experience at night. But day was better. But the night, man, I don't know about you. I did not like it. <laughs> hey, man, people doing things in the corners or right in front of you, and you're like, isn't that legal? And, yeah, substances, and it was a fun time. But yeah, there were definitely times I'm like, 
man, I wonder how easy it would be just to cart somebody off or show up missing with somebody. And you know, just I actually have no, I've actually not looked into how safe Coachella is, but he just had that vibe to it. It did, man. It did. And then people were just like, yeah, they were friends. Everybody was on something. <laughs> so there you go. But anyway, I digress, Mr. Benja. But yeah, so yeah, we got this big sphere thing. Maybe it could make a new. I remember thinking it was crazy that every theater was going to get revamped to have stadium seating. I was like, they're going to go change all the theaters to have stadium seating. That's going to take a lot of money. Who's going to do that? Next thing I know, they're ripping out all the seats. If you didn't have stadium seating, you were a punk. They just basically said, look, if you don't have stadium seating, get, get the hell out of here. So maybe it's all I mean, you know. It's domes. I don't know. It's Vegas, man. I saw you can't put too much stock on it. Is this going to be something that's going to be repeatable in other cities and all that? I I don't know. I don't think that's plausible. It's Vegas, right? That's just what they're known mm -hmm. for. You're trying to get more people to come, and yeah. so regardless, and so I don't think it's going to be something. You're right. It may if it truly takes off and it's like standing room only, you can't get in and see the sphere. Because they're going to film the, I think the NBA tournament's going to be there too. The inaugural NBA tournament, the final is going to be in December. So we'll see how sporting events, how they look in there. So that's going to be interesting. So yeah, so it's, yeah, they're trying to figure this out, but it's way too expensive unless they, unless it's just like such a phenomenal experience that you just have to, but we've seen that before. The Disney shut down their, their whole immersive Star Wars galactic cruiser event so that was too much for their audience and it, but it's supposed to be an amazing experience so it is a balanced business it's on a spectrum right what amazing yeah. experience but at the same time it's got to be priced appropriately or it's just going to be not for your right avatar yeah you don't want to be you don't want to be selling a, a dome to somebody like me who drops disney plus and is content buying a bag of sweet potatoes instead of going to see some, some damn dome um, i did i did want to say that Yet. <laughs> <laughs> you racks poetically about sweet potatoes for 10 minutes and i was like that flows your hey. flow, bro <laughs> it's funny being it's funny being in tech and then going and trying it out and just being like that's cute and then going about my business yeah i love it so if you're gonna check out the sphere they have movies playing during the day and events at night so you can catch movies three times a day Tickets are like $49 and starting at $49. And then they go all the way up to 300 or something for better seats or more premium access. And then you have events like, as I said, the U2 concert or whatever else they're going to put there. Vegas is always going to put some, something in there. Expect to see your crazy big events doing crazy things with these screens on the interior of the sphere. I want to see what this thing is going to be pumping out a year, two, three years from now. And if you've seen the concert scene recently, I can imagine getting really tripped out, having somebody falling down those stadium style bleacher seats and, oh my God, I'm too immersed. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that don't <laughs> and especially if they're hopped up on some miracle drug or whatever, man, that, that experience is going to be extremely immersive. I, so, yes, yeah. I, I could fly, dog. To the boom, 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 boom. That might be another problem, right? So, <laughs> it's a, oh, yeah. but uh, I'll all that. right, all right, on to the story number four LinkedIn is for teens because Facebook is for old people. I don't know what this means, man, but yeah, we got this story coming out that LinkedIn is being used by a lot of teenagers and young people, not so much for job that's there too, but they're being social on this. Theo, you heard about this one, what happened? Yeah, man, I guess this is weird, but I guess LinkedIn's reporting around a 41% increase in the volume of content posted from Gen Z. And so it's, they're seeing a lot of Gen Zers and those are those that born in 2021, in the 20, what, 2000s, early 2000s, mid 2000s to now the ones that the 18 to 20 year old teenagers they're seeing more increase on LinkedIn more and more. And I think we talked about this before. Social media is becoming a drudge. It's just, hey, post, how many views I got. It's this constant treadmill, right? You're on and trying to get views. Whereas LinkedIn is not like that, right? I recently went on a, a rant with a bunch of friends and colleagues on LinkedIn. It's a very different experience to social media, right? You post it out in the void. 
and you don't know when they're going to post back. It's not like social media. You just put something out there and you get some likes and views. You don't know who's watching what. And then most of the time people are bragging about some thing they did at, at work or, or at the job, right? To get another job. I get that part. But it, it is an amazing product. tool to keep. Yeah, a product release or just some brag tool. But it's amazing that the teenagers are seeing this as a more friendly version of social media where they don't feel as criticized. And I can see that. You're not really judged on your identity so much. You just look at as what is, who are you are in your professional career, who do you represent. And that's, it's almost like a, you know, whereas you could be feel like you're judged on social media by who you are, your appearance and all that stuff, because it's more directly facing. I think LinkedIn, there may be like, and I just came up with this just now. I think there may be like enough barrier, right? This is your professional self, right? And your personal self is a little bit behind here. And so I think people, the teenagers are liking that aspect because they're just so used to that rawness of being out front um, with social media. So I'm, I was, in, I was amazed too, when I read that story that more teens are on LinkedIn and obviously it's, it's for those who look for jobs, interns and teenagers probably have a lot of angst about finding internships, college students finding ways to get a job in a, in a high inflation environment, bad economy. So all those factors are probably conflating now to create this need for the teens to show up on LinkedIn. I use it. I don't know, Mr. Benji, do you use it much? I, I use it here and there. Sometimes I'm just going in to check on people and it's mostly the same stuff. Hi guys, we're hiring. Hey, my new product got released. Hey, check out what I'm doing or check. It's either what I'm doing or. I found a job. So I, so it's the same kind of stuff. I, I actually tried posting some social stuff a while ago and it worked out where I'm like, mm -hmm. Hey, let me tell you a story about how I'm doing my job. And I did that for a couple of weeks and I was like, I get it, but it's like a stand up comic, not being in a comedy club. They're doing stand up comedy in a Chipotle. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like I was getting good reactions, but I'm like, why am I here? That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny, Charles. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. funny. Hey, confess with my shoes. But yeah, it's, and that's what's interesting with this whole, whole Gen Z on this thing and teens getting into it is millennials aren't that into it. I don't know why. It's uh, millennials aren't so big on it. They're like, eh. So maybe it's one of those parents, grandparents, generation mm -hmm. type of thing. Through what my parents were doing. I'm checking out what my grandparents were doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Good point. That's the cool thing, LinkedIn. Yeah, man. So like I said, we'll keep a story, eye on this story. Uh, I am posting more LinkedIn. You probably see me put some stuff out there, but you're right. It's just about self-promotion and communication to a little bit more corporate or worker bee type mentality as opposed to social media, yeah. which is more, hey, look at me. I'm a coach. I'm a guru. But you know what? You see more and more gurus show up. We talked about this. Gary Vee, right? He He's really pushing it hard. I think he saw it as a some open ground. Is he pushing this hard or do you see him caping still Not for as LinkedIn? hard anymore? But yeah. that may be because he was pushing it for the purposes of getting attention and advertising to it or marketing to mm -hmm. it. If it's just a place to hang out and there's not that upside, he doesn't really talk about it so much. He watches it, doesn't talk about it so much. And he hasn't been talking about it. So I don't know if you're watching it. Okay. Love it. All right. You, you want to vent a little bit real quick? Do it. Story number five. Vent of the week. Loki just came out and I got to ask the question really quick. Are we still excited about these MCU stories and the MCU in general? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell Mr. Ben, this is my thought. I just remember we were so hyped about the Marvel movies, right? With WandaVision and Loki. I can remember literally, oh, I got to get up in the morning. We had talked about even doing a live show. I don't know if you remember about these shows and just talking yeah. about them as soon as they post because it was so exciting. Here we are a couple of years later, man. It's just so sad, man. I watched it. It's still decent, but it's just not that same excitement anymore. It's almost like homework. It's fucking. Okay. Yeah, I'm a pen. Oh, let me see. Let me see the TVA. Okay, TVA. Okay. John DeMajors. Oh, yeah, he's still there. Okay, what's he doing? With, okay, I'm good now. Turn it off. <laughs> yeah, and it's, then every once in a while you get a little chuckle. Oh, that was amusing. This, I don't know. It feels like homework to me. What are your thoughts? Are you? Yeah. I just got back on Disney Plus just to check this out. So we'll talk about Star Wars next week and I rant. But yeah, I'm not digging it. It's just like, all right, whatever. Cool. But I'm not like into it. I'm not against it, but I'm not like pulled into it. 
and I'm getting and more. Mr. Benji, into- you were the one. You were the one that had the grab stuff. Hey, this is a multiverse, and this is where we're going to go to. Hey, we're in the multiverse, and you see here. Yeah, it says here in the multiverse, and when you cross over, you're not excited. That, that was me. Uh, no, they dropped the ball. What they need to do is release the multiverse of madness too in the sphere in Vegas. And then we got some. Then I'll be in. Bring me back. I'm Mr. Benja, on that note, we're going to end this one, man. I love it. I love it. I love it, guys. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Please subscribe and comment at Show vs. Benja on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Listen to us at Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. But if you want to check us out on our website, go to Show vs. Business. All right, Mr. Benja, take care. Peace.